and we'll be recording this. So you are going to get a recording tomorrow, um, and I would suggest re-watching parts of the recording or all of the recording whenever it's convenient for you, maybe the week before your ACT, maybe the night before your ACT. Um, yeah, whenever, whenever you feel like it would be most helpful, beneficial to you. So the title tonight is the ACT, Raise Your Score by Four Points. Um, that's the name of the game, and um, that's why you guys are giving up some time tonight. I appreciate it. I know everybody is busy, so I promise that these 45 minutes will be worth your time. Let's jump right in. Um, so my name is Tom Ehlers. I'm the founder and president of Method Test Prep, and um, just you know, just some getting started notes. So tonight's class will run from nine to nine forty-five. Uh, to to avoid you know any distractions, we have to mute everybody. We do have quite a few people on tonight. Um, there will be some polls tonight, so you will have a chance to participate. Um, and this session, like I said, will be recorded. Um, so some folks will watch the entire recording. Some folks will just watch the parts that they need to hear again. If you do pay attention, keep uh, you know keep all the other windows closed. Keep uh, ESPN.com closed, and you will learn a lot tonight. Uh, so there was a ton of interest in tonight's class. We had a huge turnout, and so the class is much larger than our normal classes. You can ask a question during the class by typing it into the uh, the question answer box. Lots of you have already typed in questions. We will not be able to get to all questions tonight, unfortunately. During our regular online classes, we do answer all the questions, of course, but tonight there's just no way for us. There's um, way too many folks on tonight. If you do have a question that is not answered tonight um, that you need an answer to, feel free to give us a call at 516-597-4999. You have the number there at the bottom. or fill out our contact form, and we will get back to you. And um, one of my colleagues wouldn't mind just posting that contact form in the uh, chat box so everyone has it. Okay, so let's jump in. And <clears throat> this is a funny cartoon that I saw. There's been a lot of talk about whether I should take the SAT or take the ACT. So um, in this cartoon, Parents are thinking SAT, but we're told that left-handed students born on Tuesdays do better on the ACT. And, um, of course, that's not true, and my advice is simple. Every student should take the ACT and the SAT once. Every college in the country accepts either score, so you might as well take both exams and see which one you do better on. Colleges are giving you two chances to be successful. Might as well try both. So tonight, obviously, we're going to be focusing on the ACT. And I do want to start out with a poll, everyone. So the um, question for you is, are you, planning, are you planning on taking the SAT or the ACT? So I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. And if you don't mind, select the best choice. And you'll notice we have both, or not sure, or neither. I'm a teacher or an ed educator. So I'm going to choose the option most appropriate for you. OK, um, thanks so much. Most people have voted. Over 80% of you have voted. And I'm happy to see that most people did select both. So most, most of you out there are planning on taking both exams. Um, there are a number of folks planning on just taking the ACT, so do consider both. Um, a few people said not sure, so um, and now over 90% have voted. Let me close that poll. And actually, everyone, I'd like to ask one more question so I get a sense of who's on with me tonight. Um, so what grade are you in or is your child in? So let me open up that poll. Go ahead and select appropriate answer. All right, so almost 90% of you have voted already, and 66% uh, uh, selected 11th grade. Again, a bunch of 10th graders, a bunch of 12th graders, some 9th graders, and some other. 
Uh, so thanks for that. That's what I expected, but it's always nice to have a good sense of who's on with me tonight. So just so everyone knows a little bit about my background, um, I, I went to Princeton University. I've been doing this for the last 15 years. Um, method test prep is used by over 800 schools around the world. I think what's most important to me that you all know is that I do work with students every day. I'm not some guy. Welcome to GoToWebinar. Webinars made easy. I felt like I was rushing for five hours straight. And I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about my experience um, in a minute. But um, So I just want you guys to know that I am in touch with the challenges of the ACT. I do understand um, the challenges. And, and so I think I'm in a pretty good position to give you some advice tonight that should pay off for all of you and help you raise your score four points. So let's jump right in. Um, and just so you know, I'm not a robot or uh, some guy who has no life outside of the SAT and ACT. Those are my, my kids. No, I am not starting them on ACT prep yet. As a matter of fact, this is what happens when I tell them it's time for math. So um, I'm holding off another year or two before I start the ACT prep. Um, that was weird. We told them we were giving them their presents, so um, that was just a joke. All right, so let's jump right in. Tonight's goal is simple. I want to save you all a lot of time. We're all so busy these days. It's really um, time-consuming to gather information. So in 45 minutes, you will get probably four hours worth of information um, because the stuff is located in different places. And I do want to take some of the mystery out of the ACT. So there is a reality, everybody. Students can raise their scores. The ACT is not an IQ test. And if there's one thing you remember from tonight's webinar, I want it to be this. This is a test you can prepare for. Okay? This is a very repetitive test. The ACT tests students on the same questions over and over again. If you put in the time and you put in the work, I guarantee you can raise your score. And just having that attitude alone will make a big difference. I've worked with probably 10,000 students preparing them for the ACT. The biggest problem that a lot of students face is that um, they don't really believe they can improve their score. They think that it's hopeless, that it's an IQ test, and that couldn't be further from the truth. The joke that I like to say, and, and it's really the truth, is the ACT is the test of how many ACT questions you've practiced. If you practice 100 ACT questions, you will raise your score. If you practice 200, you will raise it even higher. So just remember this, guys. Know that every one of you out there absolutely can do better on the ACT. That's something I'm very passionate about. So this is a fact that I think shocks a lot of students. Each additional question that you get correct on the ACT could raise your score one additional point. So if you just get five more math questions correct, that could make a four or five point difference on your ACT math score. And when I share that with students, it does motivate them. It does make them more optimistic because just, just focusing on a few more questions, um, just, you know, just um, sort of bearing down on a few more questions can make a big difference on your score. We all know that if you score three or four points higher on the ACT, that means you're going to get into more colleges. It could possibly mean more scholarship and financial aid money. So I want students to know you get five more right on the math, five more in the English, five more in the reading, five more in the science. That's an enormous difference on your ACT score, four or five point difference, which, which, which is significant. So it's a good fact to keep in mind as you're preparing. So just a quick overview, um, the ACT is created by the ACT Incorporated. Um, it, the ACT was traditionally taken more in the Midwest than some areas of the South. Um, that's no longer the case. Every college in the country will accept either the SAT or the ACT. It's not like some colleges prefer one over the other. They all have charts where they compare your SAT and your ACT scores. Okay, the ACT has become much more prominent. So it's really interesting to note 
that more students actually take the ACT these days than take the SAT. Okay? And that surprises a lot of people, especially folks on the East Coast or the West Coast. The ACT is now the more popular test. Okay? It's scored on a 36-point scale. So 36 is the perfect score. And the ACT is given seven times a year. And I'm going to talk in a minute about when are the best times to take the ACT. Okay, so these are the ACT dates coming up this year. There is an ACT coming up on February 8th, okay? It's not given in New York on February 8th. Um, but then there's another ACT on April 12th and June 14th. And you can see here are the regular registration deadlines, okay? And then here are the late registration deadlines. You may want to jot some of these down it's annoying to miss the regular deadline and you have to pay an extra fee. So the sooner you register, the better, because then you get your first choice of location. Okay? Um, just want to point out now, everybody, that the April and June exams do have an advantage. They offer what's called TIR. It stands for Test Information Release. That means the ACT will send your entire test back to you. So you can actually see which questions you had right and wrong. Now you do have to check an extra box. Um, they do charge you an extra, I think it's $19, but you pay the extra $19 and they send the entire test back to you. Okay, That's what I did when I took the test in December, because December also offers that service. Okay, And so I will get back my entire booklet so I can actually see the questions that I got wrong. It makes a huge difference. So just note that April and June offers that option. February does not. So um, I think students should take the April and June ACTs, and if they do, they should order the TIR. And I'll, I'll mention that one more time in a second in case anybody didn't catch that. So how to register for the ACT, just go to actstudent.org, okay, and check that extra box, the Test Information Release Service. It's a shame to me, most parents that I talk to, most students that I talk to, were not aware of that service and, uh, and don't check the box because they don't know what it is. You will get your test scores back two and a half weeks after the exam. That's online. You won't get your full test back. The test information comes back about two months after the test, okay? maybe a little sooner. But you just want to give everybody a heads up. You'll first just get your scores. And then later you get your full booklet back. Okay, so the structure of the ACT, okay, it's a long test. You have to mentally prepare yourself, okay? The week before I took the ACT last month, I, I had to mentally prepare myself to sit for that long. It's actually three hours and 25 minutes of work time, but you're at the test center for a lot longer than that, you know, because you have to fill out the scantrons at the beginning, you have to get organized into rooms. There's breaks involved. So you're at the test center um, for at least five hours and sometimes more. Um, so anyway, it's a long test. Okay? And that's, that's part of the challenge of the ACT. It's an endurance test. So there's one English section. Okay? And you can think of the English as, as grammar. I'll go into detail in a minute on that. But the, one of the biggest challenges with the English, you only get 45 minutes to answer 75 questions. That's challenging. Now, the good news is the questions are often easy. Okay? So a lot of the questions are easy, and there's only four answer choices. Okay? But you really have to fly through that section. You can't double check everything. You can't read a question five times. You have to really focus in and move through the material quickly. The math, 60 questions in 60 minutes, pretty straightforward. Okay? The reading. 40 questions in 35 minutes. It's four passages for reading. Each passage has 10 questions at the end. Okay, so that's the structure there. And then the science is also 40 questions in 35 minutes. Okay, so it's a test that you really have to move quickly. There is a separate and optional writing section. Okay, and, and that's a 30-minute essay. Um, but I encourage every student to do the essay because 
often colleges will say, if you give us your ACT scores, you have to submit those scores with an essay. So if you don't take the essay, you may have to retake the ACT just to take the essay part. So it's, it's extra 30 minutes. Um, it makes more sense to sort of suck it up and do the essay the first time. Okay, so that's the structure. Pretty straightforward. So I um, just want to give everybody a break from listening to me blab and also want to give you a chance to answer a poll question here. What is the national average score on the ACT? Go ahead and take your best shot. What do you think the national average score on the ACT is? Okay, about 90% of you have voted, and the answer is 21. The Nash, and, and that was 39% of voters put in 21. Oh, now it's 40%. We closed that. Very, very, very sneaky there. Um, so, you know, their answers are all over the map, and, and listen, that's, you know, not a question you're going to be tested on, but it's just nice to know. So the national average on the ECT, let me go to the next slide, is 21. And just uh, that equates to about a 1530 on the SAT, and that's out of a 2400 score. Okay, so you know a 36 is perfect on the ACT, a 2400 is perfect on the SAT, and then a 21 is the average, and a 1530 is the average on the SAT. Okay, so that just gives you guys a sense of the scale on the ACT. And anything above a 21 is above average. Okay, as far as what's a good score, that's obviously that's a relative question. The smartest thing to do is go onto some colleges' websites that you might be interested in, check out what their average scores are, and that's going to give you a sense of what you're shooting for. It's important to have a goal in mind, obviously, um, when you do a practice ACT, something that you're shooting for, and then obviously on the real exam. Okay, so let's get into the meat. Uh, I, I needed to go through some general information, everybody, because if I didn't do that, some people would say, hey, wait a second, you didn't, you didn't tell us you know, anything about the format or the structure or anything like that. But let's get into the meat of the presentation. How to raise your ACT score, four points, a five-step plan. Um, and some of you may raise your ACT score just from now being more familiar with some of the information I've already gone over, uh, more familiar with the structure of the test. But let's get into the four parts now. So step one is working smarter rather than working harder. And what do I mean by that? I have talked to a lot of parents and students who are obsessed with getting a better ACT score, and they end up taking the ACT you know, five times. But they never knew about the TIR, the Test Information Release Service. Okay? And that's just working harder. That's not working smarter. So I'll give you the smartest plan if you're a junior. Take the April ACT and order the TIR. Then take the June ACT and order the TIR again. This way, over the summer, you're going to have two full official ACTs that you took. You can look at the questions you got wrong, and you can and you can analyze your mistakes, you can figure out what you did wrong, you can bring that to a tutor or a teacher or a, a friend or a parent, and you can go over the question you got wrong. And people say, well, what do you do with a student? The first thing I do with a student when I sit down with the, the test information release they took, I look for the five easiest questions that they got wrong. The five easiest math questions, the five easiest reading, the five easiest writing, five easiest science. Okay, the math is really easy because they go in order of difficulty. And what I do is I, I have them retry those questions. Often they get a bunch of them right without any help from me um, because they were just rushing on the day of the ACT. Sometimes I have to give them a little pointer, a little tip. But once I show them a couple of questions that they missed, and how simple it is to correct those mistakes, that's when I see the light bulb go off 
in the student's head. I, I see them change their attitude about this exam because they say, wow, I really could make a difference on my score. You know, it's frustrating to me that students get their ACT score back and they think, ah, there's nothing I can do about this. And, ah, I stink at the ACT. I stink at the SAT. I'm a bad test taker. When the attitude should be, take the April ACT as a first shot, almost like a first draft. Know that you're going to do okay, but you're going to do even better in June. And then you are going to score your best in the fall of your senior year. You're going to score the, score the best the fall of your senior year because you're going to take advantage of your two TIRs from the spring of your junior year. Okay, and then one tip for the large number of sophomores and freshmen that are on this webinar, I can see by your the answer to your poll question, the poll question. If you're a tenth grader and you're a ninth grader, jot this down, you might want to think about the December ACT because that exam also offers the test information release service. If you are a motivated student, if you are looking to go to a competitive college, you will be ready for the ACT in December. You might want to take it so you get an early indication of the types of questions you're missing. Okay, and then ultimately, you will score your best fall of the senior year. Okay, let me just put it senior year because you're going to utilize the mistakes you made. Okay, and, and now that I say it, I'm sure people out there are shaking their heads, on their heads. It's a no-brainer. It's obvious. You see what you did wrong, you improve for next time. This is a very repetitive test. Same questions over and over again. That should make all of you feel better about this exam. Okay, if this was a test that we could not predict, that would be bad. But this is a test that's very predictable. Same questions, same tricks, same concepts over and over again. Okay, that's step one. I hope that makes perfect sense to everybody because that in itself could make a four-point difference on your ACT. Most students are not using the results from past exams. Okay, step two, the ACT English section. Okay, so guys, when I took the ACT a month ago, the biggest thing I had in my mind for the English was to just move quickly. And what I was shocked by, even though I've been tutoring for this exam for 15 years, I was shocked by how many questions were just asking me to eliminate repetition, eliminate redundancy. It's a really easy concept to pick out if you know it's going to be on the exam. See, I always say to people, I'm not Albert Einstein, I'm no genius, but I know what to look for on the ACT. And I knew they were going to test me on, on eliminating repetition and redundancy and unnecessary words. So when I took the exam, I found, I think it was seven, eight, nine questions where because I knew to look for that, I got the question right in two seconds because I knew it was there. Um, more fun to let you guys take a shot at this question. So let me put up a poll here. I'll give you the best shot. Sixty percent of people have voted, so I'm going to wait a few more seconds. If you're not sure, just put in your best guess for fun. Don't worry, I'm not going to give anybody detention. All right, some people are a little gun shy, but over eighty percent of you have voted, and you know what? This was a tricky question. The best answer is let me close up this poll. Um, the best the answer is D, and, and the answers were all over the map, but let me explain why, okay? Um, so it says the sign was a symbol to the people from the surrounding villages that outsiders were not welcome in town. There's no reason to put conversely here because the next sentence goes along with the first sentence. The two sentences agree with each other, 
Okay. So if the two sentences agree, we don't need to say conversely. Conversely would be if they're the opposite. And on the other hand, would be if there's opposites. So if if they were, let me just write O and O P P O S I. Okay. okay, whatever. Right, you guys get it here and here, then those two answers would have made sense, but it's not. These two sentences agree with each other. And choice B, what do you know? That's that's slang. Uh, that's sort of a slang phrase. It's not a formal phrase, and it's 99% of the time going to be wrong on the ACT. So really, the best choice is D. There's no reason for an extra word. So you see, guys, this question will seem much easier to you all. And believe me, you're going to get a question just like this thing your ECT. You're probably going to get multiple questions like this. You don't need that extra word. And I know, you know, the ACT takes advantage of students because students have been taught to use transitional phrases. So everyone's looking for a transitional phrase. But um, here, it's just the. So the sign was a symbol to the people from the surrounding villages. The outsiders were not welcome in town. The sign's me message resonated well beyond the territory. And people from far away spoke of the town's unfriendliness. Right? Both sentences talk about unfriendly. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Uh, let me give everybody a full minute, or at least 45 seconds, to try this one. I'll launch the poll in about 20 seconds. Okay. Okay, over 80% of people have voted. Get in your answer, even if you're not sure. And there we go, we just hit over 90%. We got a couple characters out there who are choosing E. This one is not E. Um, but the majority of you have gotten this one correct. Nice job, the answer is D. Okay, and when you read this sentence, if you, so I always read it the way it is. So in Proctor's 1931 critically acclaimed novel, The End of Time, details the struggle that a working class family in an anonymous Polish city faces. That sentence doesn't make sense. And you might have to read it a second time, but you realize it doesn't, it's not a complete sentence. So then it's like, okay, would though have fit? But if you put in though, then you're going to have an incomplete sentence. And if you put in while, you're going to have an incomplete sentence. So the answer is B. And don't be afraid of this choice. I think a lot of students are um, sort of predisposed to choose delete. But, um, but it's, it's the right answer just as much as any other choice. So I don't want you to sort of lean away from it. Don't be afraid of delete the underlying portion. If you take out the word in, the sentence sounds fine. It's the only choice where the sentence sounds fine. So let me read it out loud. Sometimes you need to hear it out loud. Proctor's 1931 critically acclaimed novel, The End of Time, details the struggle that a working class family in an anonymous Polish city faces. Okay, so that sentence sounds fine. So guys, th th just this rule alone, get rid of extra words. Okay, jot that down. Let me try to make that bigger. Sorry, guys. Get rid of extra words. Okay. This piece of information alone will make a bigger difference on your ACT English score than probably anything else. And it's a shame to me that many students are just not on the lookout for this. Okay, you will see eight or nine examples just like the two we did. Now, guys, tonight I promised I'm going to try to tie this up within 15 minutes, so we don't have time to go into a lot of stuff. But 
we are offering a free English class coming up on Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be 45 minutes of just tips and strategies like the one I just gave you. So if you found that tip helpful, you're going to find the class on Monday night a lot more helpful. Okay. Now, if you know you can't be on live, okay, because you have basketball or you have, uh, you know, you, you got play practice, you got whatever, register anyway, because you're automatically going to be sent the recording. Okay. Any savvy um, student out there, parent out there, you should sign up for all of our classes next week. And you'll have in your email inbox a library of free videos that go through every um, or at least many of the tricks and strategies and techniques, as much as we can pack in in 45 minutes. Okay, so that's step two, eliminate extra words on the ACT English. Step three, to getting a, to raising your ACT score four points. So I don't know how many of you are aware, but we have, at Metatest, we have an ACT math review packet, okay? Um, you go right to your methodtestprep.com account, okay? And many of you have an account through your school, okay? Some students use Method Test Prep through career cruising. Some students use Method Test Prep through Castle Learning. Some students use uh, Method Test Prep directly. If you're not sure how your school uses Method Test Prep, go into guidance tomorrow, they'll, they'll know. Many of you have your own individual account on Method Test Prep, okay? And when you go into your account, simply go to Resource Materials, okay? When you go to Resource Materials, go to Review Packets. So definitely jot this down if you weren't aware. Guys, when you go to Resource Materials, Review Packets, okay, it's going to pull up cram packets for the SAT and ACT. Okay, you know what? Let me let me jump on real quick and see if I can do this fast here. Just so I would proceed that I'm just hearing it. Okay, so this is the method test prep for the exams. And I am gonna log into and can again so this is the screen that many of you are used to. Okay, you have a simple checklist to follow to prepare for the ACR SAT. But up here at the top, you see resource materials. Great. You also see resource materials here. Click on resource materials in Method Test Prep account. And notice what you see here. You have a review packet to every part of the ACT. And those of you taking the SAT as well, you have cram packets for those. So if I click on each packet, it's explanatory. Okay, you see here basic trigonometry. Okay, imaginary numbers. It's everything you need to know. Just like when a teacher says to you, hey, study this. It's going to be on the test tomorrow. Well, we've got the same information for the ACT. This, these, are these are concepts that the ACT is, the ACT is definitely going to test you on, okay, um, that they don't give you on the ACT. They don't give you these, these forms. So you need to memorize them. It's real simple, guys. You should memorize this stuff the night before your ACT. If you memorize this packet the night before the ACT, you will go into the exam with such a huge advantage, okay? And it's all stuff you've learned, but you may not have done for, you know, three years now. So you need a refresher. You can even take this with you on the morning of the ACT, bring it to the exam, and study it while you're sitting in the auditorium. Waiting for um, waiting for the proctors to split you up into your room. Okay, so again, that's on their, in your method test prep account under resource materials in review packets. Okay, okay, let me jump back to um, jump back to the webinar here, and we have our ACT week math class coming up. Okay, this coming Tuesday. So ACT English is Monday, ACT Math is Tuesday, and 
I promise any of you who jump on that webinar, you will be happy you did. Okay, the instructor's name is Andrew. He's a gifted math instructor. He's going to go through some of the most common ACT strategies and common traps that they set for you. Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun. A ACT math question that scares a lot of people. Before I explain it, let me give you guys a chance to try it. You should not need a calculator for this question. That's why I didn't say get a calculator. So take a minute, give it a shot, and then I'll launch the poll. Okay, <clears throat> I know I didn't give you a ton of time, but some of you may have an answer. I'm going to launch this poll. If you don't have an answer, give it your best shot. Okay, over three quarters of you voted, over 80%. Want to give everybody a chance to participate. Remember, when we teach longer classes, everyone, the classes are um, even more interactive. Tonight, we just have so many people on. So now almost 90% of you have voted. I'm going to close this poll. And um, well done. The answers were, you know, the answers are all over the place, but the, most of you did choose A, choose a, a which is F. Sorry about that, which is correct. Um, so. You know what? what? What I can't stand is a lot of people get caught up by trigonometry on the ACT. But the good news is the ACT, for the most part, uses very basic trigonometry. So if you were not a big fan of trigonometry when you took it, or if you haven't taken trigonometry yet, the good news is the ACT is only going to test you on the most basic rules. So here, uh, which of the expressions gives the distance in miles? Well, um, the, many of you may have heard the trick of SOKATOA, okay, which is a little mnemonic device, they call it, to help you remember uh, whether you're using sine, cosine, or tangent. Right? So if you look at the angle, here's the angle right here, 52 degrees, they want to know from the boat to the dock. So the boat to the dock is our x. And that's opposite the angle. So that's, that's going to be opposite. And then we have the given information here, 30 miles, and that's adjacent to. That's next to the angle. Right? This line here would be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So if we, are, if we need the opposite here okay, and we have the adjacent, we look at our SOHCAHTOA, and that tells us that we're going to use tangent. And what's interesting about that is once you realize that you're using tangent, you look at the choices, only one choice has tangent. So that's kind of a shortcut that would have allowed you to answer this question more quickly and move on. But just to give the full explanation, we have the tangent of 52 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent which is 30. Okay, and then you put tan of 52 over 1, and you cross multiply, and you get x equals tan 52 times 30. Okay, let me just write this. I'm not going to here, guys. Tan 52 times 30, you guys get the picture. Okay, and so that's why it is choice F. Okay, nice job on that question. And notice, guys, notice that somebody says, a lot of you might say, oh, man, this guy, he's cheating. That's an easy question. This is number 42 out of a 
set of 60 math questions. So the fact is, most ACT math questions are easier than this question. Okay? This is 40 to 60. So if you found that question easy, or if you understood my explanation, then that should give you a lot of confidence for this test. This test is not as bad as people make it out to be. Okay, so that's step three, ACT math. Memorize our packet and sign up for the class, the free class next week. ACT reading, okay, so it's step four to raising your, your ACT score four points. So the most, most important thing I can say about the ACT reading is take the class this coming Wednesday, okay? And if you can't be on live, and some of you are saying, man, this guy is nuts. He thinks I have nothing else better to do. I can't be on a class every single night next week. So, so register anyway, get the recording, watch it, you know, watch it anytime it's good for you. Um, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, from what, whatever. So, and by the way, guys, here's the registration link. Um, and, and maybe Frank or Elliot, can you post uh, the links to the different classes in the chat so people can register if they want right now or at least have those links later. So register for the ACT week class. Again, I promise you it is worth your time. You will learn a lot of great ACT week strategies. I'm going to share one right now. So when I took the reading, the ACT reading section a month ago, um, I never read the passage for more than one minute. You don't have time. And do not get bogged down in reading every sentence. You know how you're reading a passage and you read a sentence and then you say, hey, what the heck did I just read? Do not go back and reread that sentence. Okay? You're just looking for the main idea. So you're just real I don't want to use the word skimming, but you're you're reading quickly. I'm I'm normally a slow reader because I like to read every detail. On the ACT, I do not read that way. I just read quickly and I'm just looking for the main idea because many answers okay, to the questions, they simply relate back to the main idea. Okay, so and I know you've been you've heard you know you've heard about reading for the main idea probably since fourth grade. It is the most important skill to develop to improve your ACT score. You will be um, it's it's shocking how many questions just relate to the main idea. And also the answers, many of them, are right in the passage. It's really just a matter of going back to the passage and finding where the answer is. It's right there in black and white. You just have to find it. But to be able to find it, you've got to move very, very quickly. You can't spend a lot of time reading the passage. If you're spending more than one minute reading the passage, you're probably going to lose your concentration anyway. Right? These passages are boring. Okay? Don't expect or hope for the passages to be fun. They're not going to be fun. The passages are going to be boring. Okay, so you have to mentally prepare for that. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's sad but true. They're going to be boring. Okay, step five. How to raise your ACT score four points. Well, the ACT science section, it's not really science. It's more or less reading comprehension. Okay, um, Many mistakes are made just re misreading the graphs. So if you know that, then you can go into your ACT and you can really focus on, concentrate on, know that questions are just asking you to read the graphs. They're going to give you information. You have to pull information off the graphs and off the axes. Okay? So we're going to go through a lot of examples next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Okay? That, obviously, I don't have time to do that tonight. That wasn't the point of tonight. We have a whole free webinar just dedicated to ACT science. Okay, but um, just to give you guys two little pointers tonight. Number one is the biggest thing I learned about the ACT science section last month. You have to be okay with putting down an answer. Sorry, I didn't realize this. Okay, I'll just tell you guys. You have to be okay with putting down an answer, even if you are not. 100% sure. Okay, I found myself putting down answers even though I really didn't have time to double check them. That's okay. On the ACT science, you have to, like everything on ACT, you have to move fast. So 
I had to put down a lot of answers that I didn't have time to double check. Fortunately, I got most of the questions right. It's just not the way I normally work. So I felt uncomfortable, but I was getting the questions correct. So just know, guys, going into this test that the science, you don't have time to thoroughly read through every single piece of information. You have to look at what they're giving you, go to the appropriate chart, and you have to put down an answer even though you don't have time to double check it. Okay. You guys get it. I started getting two pointers or more. Okay. This, um, this question is actually some of this out loud. Is which of the statements cosmic ray flux and of course any piece sometimes I don't know about cosmic ray you're not supposed to boast consistent with figure one. And you see what they did is they gave you an axis on the left and they gave you an axis on an axis on the right and that confuses a lot of people. But over here on the right that's the RCRF, and again, I know it's the, the font size is small. I apologize about that. But on the, on the right here, it's RCRF, and that's the blue box at the top, the solid line. So they're asking you about, they're asking you from January 1987 to January 1991. So if you look here on your graph, you're talking about 87 is right around here. And 91 is right around here. Well, what happened from 87 to 91? On well, 87, okay, you're about on that scale on the right. You're at one. 91, you're at about seven. Okay, 7.5, whatever. So then you look at the choices. Look at what choice D is saying. I try to confuse you. Choice D is saying RCRF decreases from one percent. To seven percent. Well, that doesn't even make any sense. Decreases from one percent to seven percent. So you wouldn't have to know anything about this chart to eliminate choice D. But unfortunately, a lot of people chose it because why? Because they saw the graph go down. When you guys hear that the ACT science has some tricks to it, that's one of the tricks right there. A choice where the graph is going down. But on this side, on this axis, okay, going down is actually getting bigger. And, and of course, that's tricky. So then the right answer is C, um, which once you, once you figure out the trick, and the answer is obvious, that RCRF increases from 1% to 7%. And you go from 87 to 1991. So again, guys, that's just one small example. Um, the, the science uh, class next week will be full of examples like that of little things you can watch out for to raise your ACT science score. Okay, 3950. Um, uh, I've gone through a lot of this stuff already, guys. So I want to just skip to my summary here. Okay, that's a scoring chart. Okay, is the ACT easier than the SAT? No, they're two different tests. Timing is tougher on the ACT. Okay, when to guess on the ACT? Well, there's a real simple answer. Make sure you answer all of them. Guys, that alone could raise your ACT score four points because if you do not get to the last 10 English questions, you've got to put it bubbled in an answer for all 10. Chances are you're going to get two or three of them right, just if you probability. So if you get two or three more, that's, that's potentially two or three more points on the ACT English just from bubbling in answers. There is no penalty for wrong answers. Okay. So make sure you bubble in every question. Okay, tools to raise your score. This is the only book you should be using. Okay, this is the real ACT prep guide. Okay, so here's the summary slide. How to raise your ACT scores to four points. Okay, number one, take the April and or June ACTs and order the TIR. Use, use the TIR to achieve your best score in September. Make sure you answer every question. Okay, that's a no-brainer. Okay. Register for our free classes, four of them next week. Okay, um, And know that if you practice for the ACT, it will pay off. This is one of those nice things in life where if you put in the time, you actually will do better. 
okay, and mentally prepare yourself. Get ready to work quickly, okay. It is not a fun experience, believe me, I just went through it, it's not a fun experience, but if you work quickly, you can answer a lot of the questions correctly. A lot of questions are medium and easy level questions. It's just that most students don't have the time to, to, to think about it, and if you lose your focus and you lose your concentration, that's going to be a problem. So you know, get to bed early, eat a big breakfast, bring snacks with you. I brought a whole bag of granola bars. Okay, I didn't eat all of them. I, I ate a bunch of them. But you can't go into the ACT with, with nothing because if you if you start, you know, if your stomach starts rumbling halfway through, um, it's impossible to think on an empty stomach. <clears throat> okay. So I hope tonight's webinar was helpful. If tonight's webinar was helpful, then um, get more of a good thing. Not only do we have our free classes next week, but we do have a full 18-hour ACT class that starts on March 12th. Perfect for students taking the April or June ACTs. Okay, our online ACT class does have a couple of uh, advantages. First of all, it is 18 hours of instruction. Okay, it's two-hour class sessions. So you don't have to go, you don't have to drive somewhere and sit in a four-hour ACT class. It's fully interactive. You, you will get to ask questions. Your questions will be answered. Okay, the webcam for the instructor will be working. Tonight I didn't want to take any chances and uh, have any problems with the webinar, so I didn't turn mine on. Um, all the classes are recorded, so they can be viewed any time. Okay, that's one nice advantage of online classes. When you take a class at school, Typically, it's not recorded, so if you miss a class or if you needed to hear something again, you don't have that chance. On our online classes, you do. Guaranteed to help students on all parts of the ACT. Perfect for students taking April or June. Okay, of course, it's nice that there's no driving required. You can take the class right from home, just like you did tonight. Okay, and there are fewer distractions in our online classes, okay, versus taking a class um, in a classroom where there can be a lot of distractions. We have small class sizes. Okay, tonight was a very large class, but small class sizes. So we do have a promo code. Okay, uh, the promo code is 15 off. And um, one of my colleagues, Frank Riley, if you could just post the link to our ACT class, and I'm going to point it out to everybody as well. Uh, so if you just so to and you'll see here live online classes. Click on live on class, and you'll see here our ACT manage class. Okay, more info. It gives you info about the class. You click on enroll. To give me information, you have the dates, and for the promo code, if you type in fifteen off, you will notice that. About sixty dollars is taken off the price of the class. So the class will be three hundred and thirty-nine dollars. So it is a nice discount. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, then you can contact us. So, as far as our contact info, everybody, um, my name is Tom Ellers. Again, the president of Method Test Prep. My email is right there. Please feel free to send me an e email if you have any questions or. Um, if you need help with anything, if you're interested in taking the class that starts on March 12th, okay, you can just register online. You can give a call. You can give an email. Um, and I really appreciate everybody being on. You were smart to be on tonight. I hope you got something out of the class. Um, and you will get the recording tomorrow, so you can go back and, and listen to some of this information again. You can share the recording with a friend. So anyway, you've listened to me blab for long enough, everyone. Have a great night. Good luck with the rest of the school year.